Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my tutorials on Python for Power Programming. In today's video, we are going to look at how to use Python to perform broadcasting tasks. Okay, that's what we are going to do. So let's take a look at what broadcasting is and then we can write the codes. So in broadcasting, what we have is a number of processes. Let's just look at them. We will have something like this. Then let's say processor zero has this data. When it transfers this data to the other processes, then this activity is called broadcast. Okay, it's a broadcast because we are sending from this processor to all other processes. Okay, so in broadcasting, the same information or data is sent from one processor to other processes or the other processes in the system. Okay. That is why this green bar here is the same as what we have here, here, and then here. Because it's the same data that we are sending. Okay. A typical usage of broadcast is, I repeat, a typical usage of broadcasting is the transmission or the sending of system configurations or parameters to other processes from one processor. Okay, so that's a typical scenario where the activity being performed is a broadcast activity okay so let's proceed so in this tutorial before you reproduce it you need to make sure that you have the following requirements satisfied you need to make sure you have a linux or mac OS system or any unit like operating system okay i prefer to use linux you should also have mpi installed i use open mpi you should have python installed you should also have the python package mpi for pi you should also have numpy so numpy is optional the core activity revolves around these ones but if you have numpy installed it's fine because i will give some additional information about how to also broadcast numpy arrays okay so please make sure to do that now i will shift to the mpi 4 pi page which is here okay, because that's what we are going to do so the mpi 4 pi page you can visit it i'll leave the link to this page in the description box and you can also get more information from this page. The link to this page is also in the description box. Okay, so make sure to visit these pages to get started with MPI for Py for Para program. Okay, instructions for installing all the other tools can also be found in the description box. So without further ado, let's shift to the terminal and then start the exercise. So let's quickly move to the terminal. Okay, so we are in the terminal now. So what I'm going to do next is to open a Python script and then I'll put in my code and then I'll execute code. So I'll say nano, that's what I use for opening my text files. You can use any text editor for that matter, vi, vm, etc. But I prefer to use nano. So I'll say nano and I'll say broadcast.py and I'll open it. Now I'll need to first import mpi for py, right? So what I'll need to do is to say from mpi for pi import mpi and I'll say com equals mpi dot com work. This com is important because it has information about the processes. Now I need to also get a rank. I'll say rank equals com dot get rank. Now take rank as a form of ID. Okay, for their processes. So each processor should be given a form of ID. So the rank sort of serves that purpose for us. Okay, so we need to always get that. And sometimes too, you may want certain processes to perform certain tasks. Okay, so you can give conditional statement that say that a particular rank should perform this task. Okay, so that processor that has been assigned that rank will now perform that task for you. So rank is important. All right. So we are going to proceed with it. So we now have the rank for each processor. Don't forget that everything up to this point will be executed by all the processes that you select, okay, that you include, okay. So each of them also get a rank. So if let's say a certain processor should perform a certain task, then when we get to that side, the processor with that rank will not perform that. We will take a look at that in the next line. So here we say if rank equals equals zero then we are going to execute a particular 
then command here okay now let's get back to the presentation i showed okay i'll just shift to that so in broadcast we are transferring from a processor to other processors so let's say this one is rank zero that's data so it's a bit data that we are now going to broadcast or that processor should create that data information and then broadcast the others all right so that's what we are doing here with this command here so if rank zero then you say user data okay equals here we are going to broadcast a dictionary okay so here let's say we are you want to transfer a user information to other processes so we are doing something similar here so we say user data okay, equals now bring my dictionary i'm creating a dictionary object that has the information all right so i'll say name let's say name is Obna. okay that's what we have here we are going to add more but if you are a beginner in python and you want to learn about dictionaries i have a tutorial for that so check the description box you'll find a link to videos that explains what python dictionaries are okay so we'll take some of that so i have name Obna. let's say height let's say 5.8 let's say this user number of computers let's say 100 let's say this users favorite color let's say blue okay so this is information about the user we have that here all right so it is this information that we are going to send to the other processes i.e broadcast okay that's what we have here now when we go to the other command line other line let me just put it that way we say else and we say user data equals none because we still need to initialize or still need to make that variable available to other processes. Okay, so that's what we have here. So you put it this way. Now when we go to the next line, we now say user data equals and we say com dot we say user data. And we say root equals zero because we are broadcasting from rank zero. I will say print user data. Okay, so now let's exit and save the changes. Okay, so now we are going to execute the script. So we will say MPI ex. We say dash n four. Okay, we are including four processes okay so mpi ex eac dash n4 and we say python and we say webcast.py so let's execute the script perfect so now we see what the statement here so rank zero to the broadcast okay and then all the other processes received it and have also printed it here so that's what we are so this is how a typical broadcasting is done now what we did here was to broadcast additional objects but i also want to show you how to broadcast a numpy array that's what we are going to do next okay so let's take a look at that here there is a section here as well so let's look at it so we are going to basically reproduce this one here okay, okay so that's what we are going to do next. so let's try to do that as well so I'll clear the screen and then I'll proceed. Okay, so we are now going to do a broadcast of an NP array, I mean NumPy array. So I'm going to create another Python script which I'll call broadcast2. So I'll say nano 
podcast two dot pi. And I'll import my library. So I say from MPI for pi. Import MPI. I also import NumPy. It's MP. Then I'll define my com. So that's MPI dot com four. Then I'll get rank. Then when I come here, so I want to use rank zero to broadcast. So I'll say if rank equals equals zero. Then I'll create my numpy array. So here I'm going to create an array, okay, with hundred elements. Okay, so I'll just say data equals mp dot arrange. I'll say hundred. Or well, let's just make it five, okay, to make it simple. So arrange. So I'm going to get five numbers. These are integers. I'll say d type equals Okay, there's this. Then when I come to the else, because we are broadcasting from rank zero, rank zero we define the actual data, and then when we come here, we just have to initialize the variable. So here is going to be empty. So I'll say data equals mp dot empty. I'll say five because I want five elements. So again, data equals to i. Then I'll just say data equals form dot b cast. I'll say data. I'll say root equals zero. So that's it. So here I'll just say print. Then I'll say data. Of course, you can also add some additional information. Okay, so here, let me just say this. Let's just say print. Then I can add, let's say, rank, comma, and I'll say data. That also works. So let's just do that to just make sure that all the processes receive this information. Then basically, this is what I'm doing now. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. Now, when you come here in some tutorials, instead of the lowercase b, they say b cast. Okay, but I chose the b because this one works. But some tutorials is uppercase B, so I'll need to find out why sometimes those tutorials use the uppercase. But for now, this one works for us. So let's use this one and later we can check the other one. So this is the final code. So I'll exit and save the changes. Okay, so this has worked. So I'll now say MPI EXEC that's N4, and I'll say Python. Python broadcast to the pipe. Okay, so let me just go over again. I'll say MPI EXEC dash N for Python and I'll say broadcast to dot pi. Okay, so let's execute this command. So now we have it done. So we see all the processes we have. The information that they received okay so this i just place it there so that we know that indeed the processes have received them we have four processes that means we have rank zero to three python starts counting from zero so we have zero one two so that's what we have so this is in a nutshell how we do broadcasting using pi for pi python package okay so with time we are going to look at real world projects where we implement para computing okay so we look at some feature selection activities some machine learning tasks, some data analytics projects so those are things i'm working on but for now it's important as beginners to get the basics of para computing then we can go to advanced studies or advanced projects so i'll see you next time